Greetings, everyone. This is Lisa Bubari, and I'm so excited to spend some time with you this fall on the Lisa Bubari Show, Time to Heal Within. Join me live, 6 p.m. Pacific, Sundays, right here on LARadioNow.com. For more information, go to HealWithin.com. Look forward to being with you. Greetings, greetings, greetings. This is Lisa. Welcome to the Heal Talk moment. This is the Lisa Bubari Show. I am so glad that, that you have tuned in. Oh, how are you feeling? It's a gorgeous evening on a Sunday evening on a godly day. Yes? Say yes. Well, the holidays are upon us and... Uh, I wanted to talk about holidays, holiday cheers, holiday rituals, things that we do, talk about forgiveness, and uh, also how there are people who are suffering and uh, having the holiday blues, and I'll, I'll give some tips later this evening about how to cope with the holiday blues and uh, feeling down. My, my question to you is, how do you manage it? Do you just shut down and close off? Or do you leave and go somewhere else? So many of us like to have our quiet time and not be bothered. And uh, here's the thing. You do not have to say yes to every single invitation. You do not have to say yes in order to make your family members happy. You do not have to say yes to every organization calling you or asking for a donation. Do whatever you can. And remember that it's not society that is going to dictate who you are. Society can only ask and do whatever you can so you're not feeling overwhelmed, so you're not feeling under duress because there is a lot of stress that it's outside of us, but most of it, we make it and we hold on to it and we recreate it. it. It's like once a thought comes, you go into this loop and think about it and stress yourself more often than what it can be. So changing a perspective, changing your thought, changing your position or saying no is the beginning of saying or empowering yourself and standing up for yourself and saying, well, I do not want to cave in to going here and there just because they want me to. And I choose, I pick and choose where I want to be. I want to pick and choose who I want to be with. So today I made a phone call to an acquaintance and with, uh, within one minute of hello, it was all about their ailment and their disease and how the community, everything is stressing them out, and uh, the pain here in their body, the pain there in their body. So after about 10 minutes, I was ready to tune out, and then I asked one thing. I said, what part of you is happy? What makes you happy? And immediately, I shifted her thoughts her thoughts from all the disease and pain, she said, what do you mean, happy? Well, what makes you happy? What can you do at this very moment? Can you bake? Can you go to your kitchen? Can you look outside your window and see the flowers? Well, what is one thing that you can do that will bring you joy and will make you happy? And she said, well, as I'm sitting right here looking outside, I see the most beautiful hummingbird. It's like 
th- there's two of them. And from that water fountain, they're just fluttering their wings and they're drinking water. Even though it's windy, they're still here. And I said, isn't that beautiful? While you are looking at the birds, even with the wind, just imagine that the wind can clear and cleanse and wash away all the residual pain that you were feeling. And all you have to think about is the, f- the beautiful uh, hummingbird fluttering. Now look at the colors of the hummingbird. And she says, well, it's blue and there's different colors. And I said, and the peak? She says, well, they're drinking water. And then she says, well, at this very moment, you're right. I forgot about my pain and I was concentrating on the birds. And I said, and what does the bird remind you of? She said, just freedom, being free. So my next question was, how would you like to be free from that pain, from that stress, from all the ailments and negativity that you were talking about this entire time? And she said, thank you. Because for that, the few moments that you helped me look at the birds, I forgot all about my pain. So here's my question, how often do we concentrate on the negativity or our disease or the pain or the I can'ts or I don'ts and not seeing the beauty, even one little bird. That bird may be coming there every single day and she was not paying attention. But sitting on that chair, feeling and commiserating in her own difficulties, her pain, her children's, uh, her children not being around, and because everybody's got their own life. And then the moment she started on that, and I said, okay, Margie, let's come back. Let's come back to the bird. Let's come back to the wind. Just close your eyes and breathe through it. Hmm. So, two minutes. Every single time that you feel overwhelmed, that you feel anxious, you feel an anxiety coming up, and you feel that there is so much stress and you are overwhelmed, take two minutes. Because it takes two minutes for us to overcome a craving. It also takes two minutes for us to concentrate and shift our mind from something that is negative, stressful, to something that we can concentrate. All you have to do is look, divert your uh, attention from pain to power, from pain to love, to joy, and see something different. Thoughts can change. And when you change your thoughts, you can change the perspective of how you look at life. This is Lisa, and you are listening to the Lisa Bubari Show. If you have any questions, please go ahead and text me at 818-919-0228. Look forward to speaking to you. Let's tune out so we can tune back in. Thank you.
Welcome back. This is Lisa from the Lisa Bubari Show. So glad you tuned back in. So how was that two minutes? Did you shift a thought? Did you shift a craving? I did that on purpose. So I just wanted to know if you practiced that two minute, either deep breathing or shift a perception. No matter where you are sitting, driving, comfortable, I want to, uh, let's talk about something else. We just got a text that came in and uh, the question is, how can I forgive a family member during the holidays when it's the most difficult time? Well, I'm not going to mention the name, but I'll just say the initials. Uh, J.F. J.F. Thank you for the question about forgiveness. I, I believe forgiveness, forgiving someone. Let, let me go back into this. Many years ago when I was a little girl, there's um, something happened that it was traumatic. And it was from a an acquaintance. Actually, it was not even... Well, it was an acquaintance. It was a neighbor that uh, hurt me in physically in a very bad way. Now, years later, even though that, uh, that image, that trauma stayed with me, and I'm going to talk more about the trauma, not the trauma, but a trauma, even though it stayed with me and going through so many healings and working, I realized the reason that person hurt me was because of their own pain that they were going through, their own jealousy, their own things. And they just wanted to overpower. It's like a bullying way. But what are the bullies? Bullies are hurting most bullies. Not that they are bullies. There are not born bullies, and victims are not born victims. So when they do the aggression and aggressiveness, it's a learned behavior. And when that happens, years later, after going through the healing and understanding part of it, I had to forgive myself, not necessarily the person, but I had to forgive myself for holding on to that grudge of that little girl. So what we do, forgiveness is, yes, I forgive you. I forgive that person. Yes, that means I forgive the act that you did or the act that you committed and the person that you are who did it, either learned on purpose or not. Sometimes people do things unconsciously without realizing it. It's There is no uh, forethought into hurting someone. That's because they're hurting inside. So when we talk about forgiveness, and you can think about this um, in any therapy that there is, most therapists will also say this, that when we forgive, we forgive ourselves for holding on to the pain, to the hurt, to the anger, because that in itself is festering inside us. You can love someone very deeply, and that person th does something to hurt you. When we forgive and we say, I forgive your action, because it's not the person we're forgiving because it's their action. We can love someone and not like something that they do. So it's their action we did not like. By understanding that, it was so much easier for me to forgive not only myself for holding on to that hurt and anger that had festered inside, by bringing love and loving myself more, I was able to forgive. And once I let that go, talk about shift of perception, shift of thought, understanding it, it was so much easier. 
so much easier for me to cope with and see that person. And when I got to see that person years later, which was only about three years ago, it was beautiful. It was beautiful in a way that I cried. I cried because all these years I was holding on to such an anger and resentment and that person did not even remember. See, things we do as a child and how we get impacted or hurt, sometimes the person who does the hurting or bullying does not even remember it when they grow up. And there are times that they remain the same bully when they grow up and become an adult. So forgiveness is from you. Forgiveness is coming from you. And if there is a family member, what if you took the time to communicate with this person and share, be vulnerable to share how their action hurt you? Because if it is a family member, most probably there is love, there is care, there is some warmth in there. And yes, there are family members who are a bitch, yes. And there is no way that you can like them. And yeah, there are family members like that. And just let them be who they are. You do not have to walk around eggshells because they are in the room. Be who you are. Be comfortable with yourself. And if they have hurt you in the past, there's two ways that I ask, um, I give an assignment for my clients. And maybe you can do this assignment. Write a letter. You write a letter. You pour your heart into this letter. And you start the letter with dear and their name. Maybe once you start it, you will realize that there's other people that are emerging and you want to write that letter to and address it to. So begin writing that letter and uh, share your feelings, your anger, your hurt, your sadness, whatever it is. And right at the end, you can say, and I forgive myself for holding on to all this. And you close it by lovingly. And you sign your name. And make sure, just like any letter, you date it on the top. Do this. Gift yourself this letter. Gift yourself this letter for this holiday. It's the end of the year. Why not close the year by closing off and letting go of all that resentment, anger, whatever it is that that person has caused you, either knowingly or unknowingly, either consciously or unconsciously. So once you write that letter, fold it, put it in a beautiful envelope, seal the envelope, and on the back of the envelope where you have sealed it. Take a red marker and put a heart. Hmm. And in the front of it, you put a smile, a smiley face. And once you're done, walk outside to either a garden or somewhere that is safe. And make sure that no one is around. You look up into the sky and you wish upon a star. And you look at that star or the sky that it's always up there protecting you, shielding you because you are truly free. If you can see the sky, that means you are free. And then light that letter off onto fire. Burn it. Burn it from four corners. And as you burn it, stand there, watch it. Make sure that you are either on dirt or on concrete. 
and wait until the entire letter is burned and come into ashes. And when all the fire is out, again, making sure the fire is out, it's all ash, and there is absolutely nothing left of that letter. You blow. Gently. Close your eyes. And you say thank you. Thank you for all the people or that one person you wrote the letter to. Be grateful that you have experienced, even though it was painful, whatever it was, and that you today, knowingly, consciously, and full in control, you set that entire thing to ashes and blow it away and let it go up into the sky. Hmm. So here's a technique that you can use. Or if you know of someone who's hurting, ask them to do the same thing. It's a part of the holidays. And I say gift yourself the freedom. Gift yourself gratitude and blessings. Because once we feel blessed, once we forgive ourselves, once we feel lighter, nothing and no one has control over us. And that is the lightest that you can be. It's called free. So each and every night when you look up into the sky and you see the moon, wink. The moon, even at the darkest time, lights a, sheds a light upon you. Let's tune out so that we can tune back in. Thank you.
Greetings, greetings, greetings. It's Lisa. Welcome back to the Lisa Bubari Show. Let's start off with me gifting you. I'd like to gift the third person who texts their name to 818-919-0228. Go ahead and text your name to 818-919-0228 and I'll be more than happy to send you a one of my audio recordings, hypnotic recordings called Enjoy Deep Sleep. Enjoy Deep Sleep. And uh, so once you text that, we'll be more than happy to get the information. I'll have my producer take care of that and we'll ship it out to you. All right. So we talked about our two minute pause for craving, writing a letter and sending it off for forgiveness. Holidays. I love holidays. Christmas time for me is a reminder of family. I remember growing up and when it was Christmas time, the entire family would get together. Us women, well, I was a little girl, so mom, grandmother, and I, we would uh, sit and watch my grandfather and father put all the lights around the tree. And once that was done, and they would do all the wiring, and they would light the tree, my grandmother would go and put the star up. And once that was done, then each and every one of us would take one um, ornament. And by placing each ornament on the tree, we would say, and here is, and we would say who I want to dedicate this ornament to. And I dedicate this ornament because I love, and then we would say the name. That was a ritual for years and years. Being an Armenian that I am, in our tradition, when someone passes, especially a loved one, from the family. We do not celebrate Christmas or we do not celebrate any holiday for a while. Um, If it is a husband and wife or parents, for one year there is no celebration of any kind or weddings or parties. That was the ritual. That was old traditional way. But nowadays, it's not as it's not as traditional. So what we do, what we did this year, because my father passed away approximately seven months ago, we're going to light um, the lights outside on the house, around the house, but there will be no Christmas tree. And yet, to me, the lights is always reminding me, because my dad and I would put the lights up together and I told mom I want the lights on so that he can see even when he's not here the lights will be there for him as a reminder that we're always lighting the lights for him to find the house or his spirit so we all have traditions we all have rituals what are your rituals what traditions do you have What do you do for the holidays that it's heartwarming and loving? Bottom line is, no matter what happens in our life, our friends, our families, no matter what bickering there is, when we come together, it's because it's a familia, it's a tie. So how do we cope with stress? It's acknowledging your feelings. It's acknowledging whatever it is that you are feeling. If you are upset with someone and you choose not to be in the same room with that person, then acknowledge it inside and share it with the person who you are going to that party with and say, I'm going only because of you or I choose not to go because this is how I feel. I know 
I have a philosophy. When it comes to parties, the person who invites you is because they want you in their house. If they are also inviting someone else to the party that you do not have a good feeling or choose not to be in the room with, it's your issue with that person, but not the person who invited you. In respect to the person who invited you, go to the party for that person if you care for the person who invited you. We are all in, in, approximate, in the proximities of people we like and dislike. Just think of it. When you're in the office, you don't like every single person in that office. When you are at home, you don't like the people inside the house every moment. When you're in a community, you do not love or like everyone in the community, not even in the stores. So we're always with people we like or do not like. And if we think of it that way, it's so much easier for us to be with people celebrating or not and saying, I am going to pretend that I am in the store and there you are. And it doesn't matter if you're in this aisle and I'm on the other aisle. Because everything is a choice. You make the choice. So reach out. Reach out and share how you feel. How you feel with the person and how you feel inside. And be realistic. Stop sugarcoating your own feelings or numbing your feelings, either by smoking, drinking, uh, eating, all this things that we do in life just to numb our feelings. If you're going to do any of that, if you're going to drink or smoke or whatever, I want you to be very present to the feelings that you may have suppressing or numbing. Just think about it. When you eat emotionally, when you drink emotionally, and one drink, two drink, after the third one, what is it that you are shoving down, suppressing, and not allowing yourself to speak up? Eating, smoking, and drinking, these are all oral. It's from the mouth. So when I do my therapy, when people come to me for hypnosis and hypnotherapy, it's one of the indications that they suppress what they want to voice and express. And it's a learned behavior. And the learned behavior is because you may have done it once, twice, and then repeated it over and over until it became a habit. But when you continue doing that habit for a while, after a while, that habit is no longer a habit. It becomes a behavior, which is a little bit harder to shift. So think back, sit back, and do this inner check as if checking inside and delving deeper within yourself. After the forgiveness, after doing everything, you don't even have to do any of that. Just be present. And if you are doing any of this, say, yes, I am, realistically. And why am I overdoing it? You see, change happens when the pain is so bad that we no longer want to feel that pain. Or the reward is so much greater. Let me give you an example. If you are coughing, if you have, uh, if you happen to be smoking a lot and you're coughing and there's a lot of, uh, uh, not only coughing, but uh, you're having a hard time breathing, going up the stairs. If any of that is happening, 
and plus all your fingers your body and everything smells like smoke and the person next to you cannot stand it then that's becoming discomfort and if you happen to want to kiss someone and they're not enjoying the smell then there is that discomfort that it's happening and we're not even talking about eight dollars a pack that it's going inside your lungs and you're just blowing it off and the same thing as eating how much is enough half a plate because our stomach is usually the size of our uh, open palm the palm of our hand and when you open your fingers that's it the size of your hands when you open it that's as big as your stomach can get and if you overload it overdo it then you are overbearing your body stuffing it stuffing it suppressing it what is it that you want to express that you are shoving more in once we become more conscious and realistic it becomes easier for us to shift now what we are looking for is that if come holidays and you want to fit in a size that you had not or your daughter or son just got married and they're about to have a baby and as the baby is born that in itself is a gift or your child having your own baby becoming healthier fitter and smelling good and fresh is what you would want to be around the baby so those are the positives one more thing right before we go to commercial is plan ahead and as I said learn to say no and never abandon the good things that happen in your life just because someone new came into your life be who you are stop changing for others let's tune out to tune in this is Lisa
What, Levine? <laughs> It's so good to be back. <laughs> This is Lisa Bubari, and you are listening to the Lisa Bubari Show. I was talking to my producer, and、uh, we were talking about holidays. And guess what? The, one person texted, and I love it.、Uh, the person who texted. Text it twice, and then on the third time, we got someone else. So we already have three texts, but keep on doing it because I may go for another one. I will gift another person, be the third person, and text to 818 919 and I will gift you a CD, one of my audio recordings called Enjoy Deep Sleep. So, who am I? This is Lisa Bubari. <laughs> I forgot to even mention who I am and actually who I am as a woman. But what I do is、uh, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and a stress management consultant. You may find me、uh, my website. You can contact me via info at healwithin.com. Or go to my website, www.healwithin.com. And yes, I do have an event coming up in March.、Uh, we are starting our early bird、uh, tickets. Go on sale already, and they're up on. And you can find more information about my annual women's event. It's a day dedicated to women, and this year it, the theme is Life's Journey from Pain to Power. It's our sixth annual event. I've got、uh, incredible speakers. There's going to be speakers, expert speakers, healing、uh, exercises that we do, music, dancing, joy, connection from the heart. And、uh, I will be speaking. There's so much, and including lunch. It's happening March 24th. 2018. It's going to be at the Castaways in Burbank. For more information, you can go to 3eevent.com. That's www.3eevent.com. And I look forward for any more information and the 3eevent.com. You can even find more information at the sixth annual. 3E event on Facebook, and you can also find more、um, affirmations that I give, quotes of the day. Just find us at healwithin.com on Facebook as well. Actually, Facebook doesn't have a dot com, it's just healwithin on Facebook. You can find me at Lisa Bubari on Instagram and Twitter. So be connected. I love to stay. Connected with you and help you through anything that either questions or affirmations, or if you would like to book a one on one session with me. And I also offer,、um, I do stress management seminars and workshops for companies and organizations. If that is something that you would like to gift your employees and staff,、uh, we can do a brown bag lunch. Hope you enjoy this beautiful music when we are tuning in and tuning out. It's by Elliot Levine and it's called Morning Something. I can't remember. Anyhow, let me ask my producer what is the name? He's smiling because I thought I would know that by heart. Moments of Love. Ah, touches my heart. And I hope. That as you tune in and tune out with us, you realize that healing within is to tap within ourselves. Because what we evoke from the past, my tagline is evoke what was. That's how we bring things from the past, from our subconscious, from our memories. 
and we embrace what is, which is embracing rea- embracing reality, the here and now. And the only way we can do that, that we want to evolve to make that change to what it is that we want to be, is going through this, the 3E method. So again, it's evoke, embrace, evolve, because you do matter. And you are more than good enough. And if ever, ever you had a doubt that you may not be good enough, I want you to know that this very moment you are more than good enough. You are worthy and deserving of so much more in health, in love, in relationships, in abundance of wealth. So, soar, look up, chin up, stand up. I'm here for you. I will stand beside you to hold your hand. I will stand in front of you to protect you if need be. And I will stand behind you so that you can lean upon me if you want me to. This is Lisa, and it's always time to heal within. Thank you for being with me. Good night, until next week.